Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go over the lead electric guitar tutorial for Graves and the Guardians. Let's jump right into it. This song is going to be in the key of B and we're going to be capoed on the fourth fret. By the way, if you want to learn this song on acoustic guitar, I have a separate tutorial. Click the link in the top right corner or in the description below. There are three different guitar parts happening throughout the song and I'm going to walk through it one by one. The first guitar part is technically the rhythm guitar part. However, if you're like me and you're the only guitar player on the team for that week, you're going to need to play this part as well. So I'm going to walk through the chords first and then dive into the basic chord progressions you'll need to crush this song. By the way, I'm going to be referencing these chords relative to the capo on the fourth fret. The first chord is your G chord or your one chord. It's going to be your ring finger on the third fret E string and pinky on the third fret high E string. The D, G, and B strings are going to be played open. That chord sounds like this. Your next chord could be called a G sus or a C over G chord. It's basically a blend between your C chord with a G in the bass. You're going to add your first finger to the first fret B string and middle to the second fret D string. Sounds like this. You can really get some cool combinations out of this once you play around with it. I'm going to show you some right now. Moving on to your C chord, you're basically moving your ring finger to the third fret A string. That chord sounds like this. We're halfway there at this point. Your D chord or your five chord is going to be the exact same C shape, but moved up two frets. Sounds like this. minor or your sixth chord is going to be open E first and second on the A and D string and pinky on the third fret high E string. It sounds like this. Now let's go over the strumming pattern. Reminder, we're in 6-8, which means that each measure gets six beats per bar. Feel free to add a little bit of swing to your strumming. Here's what the strumming pattern looks like. Now I'm going to fly through the chord progressions for you so you have them. The verse is going to be 1, 1 sus, back to 1, 6, 5, 4. In chords format, it's G, G sus, G, E minor, D, and then C. You're going to be looping that part until you get to the chorus. That verse sounds like this. Chorus is going to be one six four back to one, or in chords format is G E minor C back to G. The chorus looks like this. Moving on to the bridge, your chords are 1, 4, 4, 4, 1, 4, 4, 4, 1, or G, C, 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 G, C, 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 G. Up to that point, the bridge sounds like this. The second half of the bridge is going to be 641 or E minor C G. 
Here's what the whole bridge sounds like when you put it all together. Then after the bridge, there's a tag, and it's just repeating the 6-4-1 progression until you go back into the chorus. Moving on to the second guitar part, you're going to come in on the choruses with a unison bend. The original guitar part that was recorded didn't have a capo, so the bend is going to be on the 6th fret G string and another note on the 4th fret B string. <laughs> So if you're capoed on the 4th fret, you can play it an octave up with a bend on the 14th fret B string and the 11th fret E string. That sounds like this. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of both methods in context during the chorus. Moving on to the bridge, we're going to be mainly playing big power chords here. Your one chord or your B chord is going to be a root five bar chord starting on the second fret A string. That part sounds like this. Your four chord or your E chord is going to be a bar on the second fret A and D strings and pinky on the fourth fret G string. The rest of the strings are going to be played open. Here's what the bridge sounds like up to that point. Next is your G sharp minor chord or your six. It's going to be a basic minor bar chord starting on the fourth fret E string. There's a cool single note part that you're going to be hitting here. It's 4-2-4 four, four on the low E string. Here's what that sounds like in context. <laughs> There's also an octave thing you can play during the bridge that I hear on the record. It's just the 2nd fret A string up to the 14th fret A string and back down. Here's what that sounds like in context. <laughs> If you want to dive deeper, you should check out the Graves into Garden Survival Kit. This course comes with a complete lead guitar lesson, rhythm guitar lesson, and acoustic guitar lesson. In addition, I've included tabs and guitar licks that work for the song to stretch you as a guitar player. Those are included with guitar profiles and PDFs in all keys. Lastly, included are the electric and acoustic guitar patches for the Line 6 Helix, HX Stomp, HX Effects, and Pod Go. If you don't have any of these units, don't worry, I've got you covered. Included is a module where I break down the pedal and amp settings you'll need to completely crush the song. The link is down below in the description or in the top right corner. Moving on to the third guitar part, we're going to grab our slide and start in the chorus. You're going to be following the same exact rhythm as the unison bends. Your one chord or your B chord is on the 16th fret D, G, and B strings. That looks like this. <laughs> Your E or your four chord is going to be the ninth fret, D, G, and B strings. Here's what the chorus sounds like in context. <laughs> Now 
Next, let's move on to the bridge. There are two different parts you're going to be playing depending on which bridge you're on. The first bridge is going to be played without the slide. It's first finger on the 11th fret G and middle on the 12th fret B string. Then you're going to add your ring finger to the 13th fret G string. That part sounds like this. Then at the end of the bridge, you're going to do those single notes. It's 6-4-6 six, six on the D string, then bar the 4th fret and add your middle finger to the 5th fret B string and then release. That part sounds like this. Now the second time you go into the bridge, you're going to use your slide. Go back and forth between your B chord and your E chord. That sounds like this. Then you're going to still play the single notes with your fingers, then slide way up to the 16th fret B and E strings to get that 6th chord or your G sharp minor chord. It sounds like this. Then you're going to do the octave up to your E chord on the 21st fret and then resolve back to your 1 or your B chord. Now I'm going to play the whole bridge in context so you can see what that sounds like. To hear all these guitar parts played in context, click here to watch the next video, and we'll see you there.